is this idea of what fake news is coming from. Perfect example recently, uh, there's a case going on right now in federal court in Atlanta where CNN is being sued by a former CEO of a hospital for improperly reporting about him and his hospital about different um, mortality results when it came to certain procedures. I'm a little fumbly on the details, folks, but we'll link it at www.behindemylinesradio.us and you'll be able to read all about it. He is accusing CNN of fake news, which basically means CNN reported improperly about his particular situation. What he said was CNN was told what certain statistics meant and how they should and shouldn't have been handled. And CNN ignored that and did it anyway for the sake of a story and interpreted it their way and not the proper way. And a federal court in Atlanta recently ruled that CNN is does have exposure for certain liability when it comes to misrepresenting this person and possibly defaming him with a malicious intent to do so. And the malicious intent comes from the idea that CNN knew the proper way of how to report this information, but chose not to. And more and more about CNN is coming out. We'll talk about the the uh, Project Veritas CNN WikiLeaks in a, in a later segment here on the show. Some exciting stuff going on there with James O'Keefe, who I'm sure we'll get back onto the show real soon. But this reload is coming from media because now they are bloviating and they are totally pitching this battle against Trump as a battle for the soul of the First Amendment. Oh my goodness, our way of life, our democratic way of life, our freedoms are at stake because CNN can't get into a room with Sean Spicer. What's the world going to come to? Come on, folks. Access to the president is not a right, it's a privilege. It's a privilege granted to media sources who they believe accurately depict the news. And if CNN's got a problem with the president or with his press people, then I suggest that CNN set up a meeting to see exactly what the problem is and get to the bottom of it as soon as possible. Otherwise, CNN might start losing money, might start losing advertisers, might, heaven forbid, not be CNN anymore. We don't know, folks. I don't know what's going to end up happening. But what I do know is that there is this vicious, visceral battle going on right now with the media. And you know what? I'm loving every minute of it because we are finally seeing mainstream media for what it actually is. A lens from which people consume news that actually skews the view of what is actually happening. We're going to take a quick break right now, but when we come back, we'll talk about more of this reload, talk about more with the media, especially the uh, controversy over the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Is Donald Trump going? <laughs> and also, the third aspect of our discussion of the reload, and that is culturally. And we're looking right at you, Oscars. Gene Baradelli behind enemy lines. We'll be back right after these brief words. If you're a long-time listener of the show, or maybe this is your first time listening, you can probably tell that me and the gang here, we like to have our share of fun, whether it's on or off the air. We talk about two-drink minimum radio and no medication Wednesdays or whatever day it may be. That's why when we found the people at Less Government More Fun, we knew it was a match made in heaven with this show. Folks, we live in a time where government is out of hand. Our founding fathers did not intend government to be all-consuming in all parts of our lives. That's why we are telling you to go to lessgovmorefun.com. Check out the website. Check out the swag. What the people want is less government, more fun. Pass it on. Make it happen. Who might you save? Your mother, your father, your husband, uncle, aunt, son. Learn fast. F-A-S-T. The sudden signs of a stroke and you could save. Your friend, teacher, boss. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. F-A-S-T. That's F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. 
T, time to call 911. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in the recovery of your neighbor, the waiter, grandmother, grandfather. So learn FAST, the sudden signs of a stroke, then pass it on because you never know who might save you. Your wife, your colleague. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. Behind Enemy Lines Radio is all about being right. No, seriously, it is. Uh, If you ever listen to Russ Gallo or me go back and forth on some issue, we always want to make sure that we remember who said what and when we said it. That's why we go to GoOnRecord.com. It's a brand new social media website. Challenge people on what they believe, whether it's in politics, sports, entertainment, finance, whatever. There's a category for you at GoOnRecord.com. Check it out right now. Tell us, what do you stand for? It's time for you to go on record. Behind Enemy Lines. Back on the air. Gene Baradelli, back behind enemy lines. I want to give a quick shout out to my co-host Russ Gallo, who is going to be joining us very soon. I promise. I know, I know. I say that every week, and I really mean it, guys. I really mean it. We're getting our stuff together. We're going to be unveiling a brand new way for you to enjoy behind enemy lines radio, and hopefully it'll be coming in the next month or so uh, once we get everything set up. But I got, I, I got to tell you, folks, I'm excited about what we're going to be doing. But you know what, let's get back to our discussion of the reload that is coming up right now uh, in all aspects of life, coming from those aspects of life on the left, uh, politically, culturally, um, in media. It's coming, folks. It's coming. Uh, I want to get into this whole White House Correspondents' Dinner controversy that is brewing right now. Again, as we said last segment, Media is saying it's the end of the world. The relationship between the president and the media has degraded to the point where it can't be saved anymore. Ooh. And what that means to you. Folks, let's talk about this White House, White House Correspondents uh, Association dinner that uh, is uh, making news now. Donald Trump is saying that he, as president, will not be attending this year's dinner. And it's sparking controversy because this is irregular. This is not normal. It is something that just doesn't happen. Donald Trump tweeted out, I will not be attending the White House Correspondents Association dinner this year. Please wish everyone well and have a great evening. Now, if there were ever words about a dictator that he would say uh, about not attending a dinner, I guess that would be it, right? You know, please wish everyone well and have a great evening. Well, that really is the end of Western civilization as we know it. Uh as we said before, the president is blasting news media as the opposition party. And, you know, at CPAC, which I regretfully couldn't attend this year. Uh, you guys know that we always like to bring you interviews from CPAC. But we couldn't make it this year because life happens between me and Russ and new jobs and new lives and new houses. We just couldn't do it. But back on on message now. Uh, saying that major news outlets were the enemy of the people. Uh, you know, Sean Spicer, of course, barred CNN, the New York Times, and other organizations from a briefing at the White House. Oh my goodness, what is the world coming to? And you know, the, this correspondence dinner, which, by the way, they they like to go by, you know, nerd prom, is really the most overblown, self-aggrandizing, self-important, self-indulgent soiree I have ever seen. It's basically media's big day in Washington to get together and pat yourself on the back about what a great job that they're doing in deceiving the American people. And that's really all it is to it. Uh, the fact that Donald Trump is not going to this should send a message to everyone in media. It's time to get your acts together. It's time to get started doing what you're supposed to be doing, and that's reporting news, not characterizing news. Uh, you know, this announcement of Trump not going has already uh, seemingly had a ripple effect. Because now the Vanity Fair party is not going to be held, the after party that they normally hold. Bloomberg is now saying that they're not going to be a co-sponsor anymore because of lack of interest. The New Yorker has canceled an event. 
Oh my god, what are we going to do when we can't go to the parties that we normally throw for ourselves? Come on now. It's it's gotten to the point of, of ridiculousness. First of all, the White Horse Correspondence Dinner is absolutely ridiculous. This this idea that they that they are, you know, should gather together and uh you know, just pat yourself on the back and congratulate themselves for a job well done when they haven't done a job well done. Oh my goodness. It's just, it's the most horrible and self-indulgent thing I've ever seen. I keep using the word because I'm stumped on it, folks. Listen, the panic at the disco right now is the panic over what is happening to nerd prom within the Washington media elite. My goodness. You know what, folks? If you want to look up exactly how self-indulgent it's got, just do a Google search right now for Nerd Prom and, and see what you come up with. It's absolutely the most horrid thing. I mean, listen, we're, we're in award season now with Hollywood, and, and I'm sure many of you watched the Oscars this week. Uh, it, you know what? The only reason that this is a big deal is because media is feeling the rejection that the American people has been feeling for a very long time. To hear the the media and the cable news community say what's going on, you'd think that the United States was about to, you know, invade a, an ally or something. Uh, this whole idea of, of the uh, media just coming together and, you know, yucking it up together and ignoring the irony that they're cozy gathering with members of government isn't a problem when it comes to their accountability absolutely shameful again shouldn't we want an antagonistic relationship between government and media they shouldn't be buddy buddy there shouldn't be this incestuous relationship between the heads of media companies and people in government it just shouldn't happen the real twist that's going on here is that the guy who's usually at the centerpiece, and it's always been a guy because that's who's ever been president, the, the guest of honor, in this case, Donald Trump, is so diametrically opposed to, you know, President Obama and, and, and past presidents, even Republicans included, that, you know, they get together and they get all jokey jokey and they have skits and it's all done in this nice friendly fashion but the relationship with Donald Trump is not so friendly no more for their part the media has been relentless in pursuing Donald Trump since the day he announced he was running at first they wanted him to become the nominee for president because that would sabotage the Republican Party Oh, so they thought. Then when they saw that he was gaining traction, he became public enemy number one, and it's been that way ever since. Well, who's joking now, mainstream media? Definitely not you, and definitely not during Nerd Prom. You know what, folks? It, it's absolutely heartbreaking to see what happened to media. I mean, I'm heartbroken. Aren't you heartbroken? I mean, media has to work for a living now. They can't run their stories by the their buddies in the Democratic Party anymore. Or maybe they can, and they just get caught by WikiLeaks. You know, I mean, it's absolutely unreal to see how apoplectic media is getting right now. And part of that is also seeing how the elitist of the left, the cultural side is fueling that fire for media. When you have Meryl Streep standing up at an awards ceremony talking about Donald Trump in such a negative manner, that gets into the media. The media sells it up for days on end to the point where people get sick of hearing about it. And it creates that vicious vicious cycle. The one thing I want to say about everything we've been talking about so far in this reload is that nobody has learned anything yet. Media has not learned their mistakes of the past when it comes to coverage of President Trump. The politicians on the left haven't learned 
to recognize the strife within their own party, let alone that their vision for a nation is nowhere near what the American people want it to be. And the...